Hey, everybody. Fascinating discussion today talking about how observability, AI, and automation are changing how enterprises work with a true leader and innovator in the field at New Relic. Ashan, how are you? I'm doing great, Evan. How are you? Doing great. Thanks so much for being here. Admired you guys from afar for some time. For anyone who's not familiar, how do you describe New Relic these days? Yeah, well, um, New Relic started out uh, in the observability space. We actually started the space uh, back in 2008 when everything was moving to the cloud um, in, in a, and SaaS applications were coming across. And the, at that time, software became more and more critical. So you needed something watching over the software to make sure that it is working properly and on time. And as it's become more and more critical uh, to the world, we have uh, evolved with it as well. And today, we are essentially observability for the new AI era. Fantastic. And you've seen over a decade of this as the as the founder, innovator in this space. How has enterprise observability changed over that past decade? Yeah, so uh, even a few few things, right? So that we, it's first started when we started with SaaS applications, right? Way, mm. way back in the day, right? So the first SaaS applications, uh, you know, the, the Primary enterprise SaaS application at the time was uh, was Salesforce, and then WebEx. And I actually was at WebEx uh, for many a year at the time. And uh, it turned out that there were more variables because your software is now running in a different place. You were experiencing it from different devices, etc. There were a lot more things that could go wrong, so you needed to observe that. You needed to find out things were wrong before your customers did. And that's how observe that was a, sort of the first era of observability, observing that application. The second era was everyone moving enterprise workloads into the cloud, uh, into the, you know, the hyperscalers, the Amazons of the world, the, the um, Azures of the world, the GCPs of the world. And so then enterprise sort of, the observably shifted towards monitoring that as you moved your actual workloads uh, into the cloud. And now this third era is that, uh, is AI, right? So fundamentally AI is, you know, eating the world just like <laughs> software and mobile did. And, uh, and I think that's the next phase for observability. Indeed, and very exciting. And yet, um, kind of a blockbuster study from MIT recently showed that 95% of Gen AI projects failed. Um, what's the re reason behind that, in, in your opinion? Yeah, so just step back, just talking about AI in general, uh, right? And I think uh, it was the study had some really good data, which reached the wrong conclusions. Right? Okay. That's <laughs> how I would uh, uh, kind of talk about it, right? And to say that ninety five percent is failing, we are so early, Evan, as you know, in this mm. uh, in this whole AI uh, piece. I think it, it the, the study symbolized that. And and if you look at the study, the majority of the things it talked about in the study was not that the tools itself were failures, but the adoption and the scale mm. of the tools uh, were failures, right? And um and and you know it, it keyed on a few points. It keyed on the fact that look, there's a there's a learning gap. There's a verification gap. Am I getting uh, a verification tax in which am I getting, uh, do I trust what's being put out there? There's a complexity gap because you're trying to now integrate it into complicated enterprise workflows. Um, and so what's the real world uh, piece in there, right? So what we've seen to some degree, what they're right. So observability monitors things in production. And we actually came out with AI monitoring a couple of years ago, very early yeah. on. And there was there was almost very little adoption until the last year. We have seen air adoption increase roughly about twenty five percent quarter over quarter. So it's about a hundred percent every year that we're now seeing, and that's because now we're starting to see AI being put into production. So I think the the study uh, really talked about a experimentation phase, which to me a lot of companies are. And now companies are moving into the production space, right? Now I'm talking about the regular enterprise company. I'm not talking about the model companies or the hyperscalers. I'm talking about mm. the regular enterprise. It's now moving into the adoption and production stage. So we're starting to see that adoption and we see it in our product with our data and our statistics. Fascinating. So I just got back from the Gartner Expo last week and the mm -hmm. number one topic was agentic AI workforces, uh, an area you're intimately involved with. Yeah. Um, how do you see that rolling out over the next year and how can it be rolled out safely and, and you know, with value behind these services? Yeah. Um, so, look, um, I think the 
2025 is the year of agents, right? So if you look mm. at, you know, back in 2022, it was a, it was the year of the LLMs and the last few years have been the years of the LLMs. This last year has been year of the agents and the fundamental um, thesis behind it is that it can take out menial work. It can take, or it can do work uh, on a 24 seven basis that a human can't uh, allowing humans to do more higher end pieces. Uh, now, what happens is the reality is when you put agents out there, uh, this is going to be become, you're going to get into a much more complicated architecture, right? And the way I would, you know, if I were to, Evan, if you'll indulge me, get into a little bit of the software architecture piece. Um, you know, when we built software way back in the day, it was a big monolith. Then you moved to microservices. And while you got more capability, uh, what ended up happening is you made it more complicated, right? And so observability was really important. Now uh, you're in, in, in two, there's two, pieces in the AI piece when you're building software. Um, the first is, as you mentioned, from agents. Now you're going to start to have agents. You're going to have micro agents, nano agents doing very specific things, all communicating with each other. If any one of them breaks or hallucinates, then you could have issues, right? So observability helps keep that all in check. The other thing that's happening uh, with agents and, and just software in general is that it used to be uh, you know, when I came out to school, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say 30 years ago, <laughs> right, um, is that, you know, I knew, I probably wrote every line of code, right? Mm. Uh, then over time, that transitioned to things like frameworks. So I, I started getting more abstracted from the code itself. And today, uh, where you have vibe coding, and soon everyone will be able to put out bits of software, you are more divorced from the actual happenings of the code than we've ever been before, right? And so uh, as a result, it becomes a much more complex world. Uh, so you're going to get a huge amount of benefit from agents. People, uh, companies are going to get a huge amount of benefits from agents and from vibe coding and all of that. Uh, but it is going to be a more complicated uh, 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 environment. And that's why I think observability is just in the early innings of making agents and vibe coding and AI in general much more valuable uh, to the world. Yeah, vibe coding is a mega trend, not going away, very exciting, but yet risky for many organizations. Um, what can we do for putting guardrails out there to make it safer? Yeah, so I think there's, there's um, you know, every, every time that we have abstracted code, right, whether it's frameworks or even if it's, newer languages that don't rely on archaic things like assembly, but you're, you move to Python and, and some of the new, Golang and more of the new languages, you, we just brought more people into the, <laughs> into the fray. And, and that's just, that's a good thing, right? So that, that's why you've seen this explosion of innovation in the last decade from everything from apps to uh, everything, right? Um, and I, I think now we're on the precipice of that next era. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting. I have my um, my competitive, my head of competitive uh, with with me today. He has 20 agents working for him every morning wow. that goes and crawls everything and tells him what's going on, right? Uh, we have, and you know, I, I, I think about it, right? I, I think about, and I was talking to my son uh, about it the other day, who's in, he's in high school, you know, I, I, and we were having the conversation. I was saying, hey, look, are they going to hire you? Or are they going to hire you and your 20 agents? <laughs> right? <laughs> now, now, you know, I, and, and the reality is that, um, you know, and I was talking to a customer the other day and he every, every day he comes into work and he's got, he said he's got about seven agents working to find out the health of his environment. He has more visibility today than he ever has. Right. And so all of that is fantastic because it has brought people in some cases who've never seen a line of code into building things and the imagination is really the limitation at this point, right? And that's gonna, that's gonna become more and more prevalent. Well, because of that, um, you're, you are going to have more and more of these sort of non-experts writing codes, <laughs> all, code, all, code all over. And at some point, you know, if one of those goes wrong, if it hallucinates or it doesn't work, uh, how do you corral that? How do you, how do you diagnose that quickly? How do you take action against that? Uh, and that's why observably for an AI era becomes really important, right? And we've seen that at some of our larger customers, they won't deploy any of these uh, AI pieces without putting something like a new relic observability in front of it. 
important, and yet we we still see outages uh, daily. We saw two massive ones with two hyperscalers just this week, wow. and I I'm a down detector every day for this that or the other application. It's yeah. not kind of my go-to site. Mm. Is this a function of complexity, or how? Give us your perspective on outages and the actual impact it's having on users and enterprises. Yeah, I mean, look, um, you probably won't find a, a better run, more innovative, smarter set of folks than <laughs> at AWS, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's. I mean, Evan, you you see so so many people across the tech landscape. You could probably attest to that, right? That these are some of the um, smartest, uh, most thoughtful folks, uh, yet we had an outage, right? Mm. <laughs> and uh, and, um, and so uh, so first off, what I will say is my, my I have a lot of empathy for folks who, who had to go deal with that outage. I, and I have a lot of uh, admiration for the folks at uh, AWS who were able to solve it in a relatively quick time, even though, um, and you can see, I, I think it proved a couple of things. First, how much digital services are such a critical part of our lives. Right. Yeah. There's just so many people who are impacted by it. Uh, I happened to, we had a customer advisory board and they were telling us, uh, you know, it was last week, right, during the during the outage. And they were saying, hey, look, how, how much this really impacted them and their company and, um, and and even humans behind that, right, whether it's a healthcare company or it's a, yeah. it's a company that is a, in, a, in a call center or, or it's a, you know, so there was, there was just a lot of impact. Um, so why why is that the case? Right. Um, and it's the case because uh, in general, uh, what's happening is because we have more, we, we have the ability to do more things faster. Um, mm. it, it is we are going, we're moving fast and the complexity is ratcheting up uh, as a result. Right. And if you look at and speed is the name of the game right now, if you look at what's happening in the I mean, you just have to pick up the paper and you see another multi-billion dollar AI deal, right? I mean, it's just, it is just that the speed, I've never seen speed like this. I was, I was, you know, the early dot-com era where we thought <laughs> things were fast. This is, this is, you know, 7x that, right? 7, 10, 10x that. And so I think with that, you're going to get uh, more and more issues and the, and the impact of the outages have grown as a result as well, right? And so I think, you know, uh, so that, so I think we'll see more of that. And the trick is, how do you get in front of that such that you're discovering it bef before it impacts your your customers? And that's where observability, uh, and especially with New Relic, with, from us, we really put a huge focus because our, our roots are from the application side. So we're as close to the customer outcome as possible. We put mm. a real emphasis on finding problems before any of your customers do. Indeed. So uh, as a leader, you have a very aggressive roadmap around AI as it becomes part of everything you build or run, what does that look like as a product over the next year or two? Can you give us a peek into your future? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the way we think about AI is there's um, there's maybe in two prongs. One is observability for AI, uh, and the second is AI for observability. Hmm. And and um, and maybe just to unpack it, the the first bit with respect to observability for AI. Uh, is that as more and more customers, and we were just talking through this entire episode about this, which is as more and more customers deploy more AI-driven code, as they deploy more agents, uh, all of that has to be observed in a way that helps them function to the best of their ability, and you get the outcome that you want uh, building that. Uh, so, um, and avoid all those blind, blind spots. So that's that's a big roadmap for us, right? So for example, when DeepSeek first came out, we mm. were the first to jump on that. And so you'll mm. see us continue to be able to monitor all those models. Um, and we give you context around all those models and all of those agents and make sure that they're successful. So that's uh, that's observably for AI. And um, and so that's that's what's what we're seeing increase, you know, 25% quarter over quarter. Um, and I think that's going to accelerate. Uh, so that's, that's the first tranche. The second is AI for observability. And the way you think about it is what observably fundamentally does is it gives you a set of data such that you can make some decisions to solve a problem. Uh, well, that needs to that needs that needs to evolve, and how it evolves is not only should we uh, are we producing the data, but we are based on all of the environment around us are able to actually tell you what has happened and how you take that 
and go and automatically solve that such that there's no business downtime. Um, mm. And in doing so, you're able to tie to business transactions, to business outcomes uh, that'll help your operators, but also help your business make important decisions about how they go to market as well. So uh, those are the two areas that the, largely that we're working on. Um, and I made a lot of progress in the last six months. Fantastic. Well done. So we're heading into the planning season for 2026. Hard to believe. Um, any one piece of advice which you know tech leaders could should consider for 2026 beyond partnering with New Relic, obviously. Sure. What else should they consider uh, as part of their 2026 plan? Look, I, I think the the only thing I will say is um, I, I would say a couple of things. I would say uh, first off, this is as exciting an era as you will ever be a part of, and I, I have been. And Evan, you've probably also been a part of few eras in uh, <laughs> in the technology field. And um, and while it's scary, you've just got to go embrace it, right? And uh, and just know that there's. And I talk to CTOs from all over the globe, right, mm. all the time. Right? And um, everyone has the same level of anxiety you do, right? And so we all have the same. So if you feel, uh, you know, feel comfort in that. Um, and really, I think embrace this era because I think this is this is fundamental. This will be a life changing um, event for us that we'll be able to talk about <laughs> 10 years from now that we were part of it. Right. Exciting times. It is. Well, what a great high note to end on. Thanks so much for the insight and update. Uh, I learned a lot. Thank you. Appreciate uh, you having me on, Evan. Indeed. Thanks, everyone, for listening, watching. Thanks, Ashan. And be sure to check out our companion TV show, techimpact.tv on Bloomberg and Fox Business. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, everyone.